Okay, here's our finished uh, finished project here. We've got the uh, base right here on top of it. Uh, we've got the first floor that sets on top of it, and it'll set in uh, right about here like this. And you really can't tell that the uh, that this doesn't meet against the house when you look at it. So that one will go on next like that. Then we have a stairway that will go in here, and it kind of tucks up. It just sort of tucks into the corner like that, and it'll set there. Then we have the next floor that goes on top of it, and the stairway will fit through the hole that we have there. So it will set together pretty much like that. And then on top of that, of course, we've got the, uh, we've got the roof that will set on top. So it just kind of sets down on like that. I'll do a quick spin around of the uh, project here. Basically, there's the front. Uh, going around to the side and you can see the chimney lines up on the side like that and it comes back around to where the water wheel is and you can see the water how that works that effect worked pretty good we've got the little bay window that sticks out and then on this side of the house we've got the uh, part here that uh, sticks out above the side above the side of the house and uh, then we're going around back to the uh, back to the front of the house. The only thing I did not is include the doors. The doors just rest in the uh, doorways there. Now, once the castings from these six molds are dry, what I've done is sorted them onto chunks of cardboard. So just take a pretty good sized chunk of cardboard, sort the blocks out, and this one has all the rubble blocks on it. And this one over here has got all the timber pieces or the beam pieces, and this one here has got the brick pieces. The reason this is handy is because Whenever I need the rubble pieces for the base, I just grab that piece of cardboard, set it down and work on it. And when I don't need it, I can just set it aside or set it on top of something else. When I need roof pieces, I can go and use my roof pieces. And when I don't need it, I can take it and move it off the table and have room on the table to do something else. Okay, to do this project, you really are going to have to print out the plans for the water mill. Currently, there are 36 pages uh, in this plan, which is probably the biggest plan that I have ever done. But I tried to make this thing easy, so um, that's why all the pages. The best thing to do is to go down, and it's basically a checklist. If you do everything in order, everything should come out. So, the first thing we're going to do is to assemble some of these pages together to make a bigger plan. Um, let's start with uh, the first one. It says to assemble pages 4, 5, 6, and 7. Well, let's find those. And let's see what we can do. Okay, here's page 4. Here's page 5, page 6, and page 7. Okay, we're going to set the rest aside. And these all go together. So let's see. Uh, that looks like it goes over there. That goes over there. And that goes over there. Okay, here's 4, 5, 6, and 7. And the easiest way to do this is there's a dotted line across here and across the middle. The best way to do it is to go ahead and cut the edge of this uh, color off, but don't cut on the dotted line. We're going to cut just past the dotted line. So I'm going to cut just right about here, and let's see, if I can get that up to the camera, you can see that I'm cutting just past that dotted line, but I'm still cutting into the, uh, uh, you know, into the printing. Now in the center here, it's a little hard to see where all four of these dotted lines connect. My suggestion is to sort of cut off the corner just a little bit. Cut a little bit of that corner off. Then when we line this up and we line the other, we've got something to do. Like the word, cut through the, the word foam and there's from here. If we can get those to line up, we can get this one lined up here. Then as we're looking at the other side over here, you know, it's kind of hard to tell where this one lines up exactly. So for the same thing, what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to cut diagonally across this corner here and kind of cut off that dotted line just a little bit like that, okay? Once we cut off that dotted line like that, then we can kind of see the dotted line that's underneath of it right about there. Now you want these to line up pretty exactly because we're going to actually plot spots on it to cut out uh, for our foam. So I get one edge lined up right on there and then I'll get the other edge lined up right on there. And once I get one side like this, let's take a big long piece of tape. And this is just, you know, regular magic tape. And we'll do one half. And we're going to continue to do that until we get all halves put together. 
Now that the two halves are together, we're going to once again cut off the uh, extra white strip on the edge, but not cut into the uh, dotted line. And after we cut that off, we're going to kind of cut off one edge of the dotted line up here, and we're going to cut off one edge of the dotted line down here. Then we're going to put this over top, and we're going to line these two up until the dotted line and the dotted line up here and the dotted line down here match up, and then up and down it actually meets on this center line. Now you can also do the same thing and piece together these front and side views of the house if you want to. Um, it's not real critical if you, if you don't, because these are basically just for reference. Uh, the reason I put them in there is just sometimes when you're building something and you're wondering, well, where does this go? What does this piece have to do with something else? This actually gives you kind of a nice reference to see exactly what pieces go where and how they fit together.